Hi there, welcome back to the channel and a new video for the Pelagonium and Geranium Society. My name is David Taylor or Mr. Pelagonium as people like to call me. And today I am doing a video all about watering Pelagoniums. I've had loads of queries about watering and people wanting to know exactly how I go about doing it so that they can maybe have a go at trying some of the techniques that I use. We've got a clay pot, we've got plastic pots, we've got saucers. We're going to look at all the ways of watering your plants. So let's have a look. Right, hello there, welcome back to the channel and a new video for the Pelagonium and Geranium Society. Now, we get a lot of queries um, about watering plants and uh, I've been meaning to do a video about this for a little while. I did actually promise um, somebody on YouTube that put a comment on the, uh, on the video uh, to do something about exactly how you go about using your saucers when watering plants in plastic pots in a greenhouse. Uh, but I've just not got around to it, so I'm doing it today. Uh, I'm gonna look at all the various techniques of watering pelagoniums. We've got a clay pot here and I've got three various size plastic pots. Got a larger growing regal, a sort of smaller regal in a, in a four and a half inch pot, and a, a smaller dwarf that again is in a four and a half inch pot that potentially I'm hopeful of getting to show. So the question arises really is why do pelagonium growers recommend watering with a saucer and not in a plastic pot watering through the top? Well, there's quite a simple answer to that in that I've obviously mentioned it many times before. Pelagoniums do not like a saturated root ball. They really don't. It's why we put a lot of drainage material in our compost for a start to allow the, uh, the, any water and moisture in that compost to drain through very quickly. And in using a saucer in a plastic pot, it enables us to control how much water is taken up into that pot. And as a general rule of thumb, we wouldn't really want the water to go much above halfway up the pot, primarily because then it will give a bit of a drier area for the, uh, for the roots to sort of stay relatively dry because pelagoniums, as I've said, like a relatively dryish root ball, but they're getting moisture in the lower part of the pot to be able to drink. Uh, and transpire through the leaves. And using a saucer allows us to control the amount that's taken up. Now one of the first methods of controlling the amount of liquid that our plants are getting um, is first of all ensuring that between each watering they virtually dry out completely. Pelagonias really like to have those little air pockets in the compost after sort of beginning to dry out. So it's important that when we're lifting up, the, for instance, this plant, this is a regal, um, this compost is almost bone dry. And it will also enable, when we fill up our little saucer here with some liquid, it will take it up very, very quickly. So that enables us to be able to control how much this is taking up and also effectively how much we put in the saucer. And we'll go into that a little bit more in a moment. Now we're just, I'll just home in and we're just sort of, have a look at what I'm going to do and how I'm going to water these plants. Now we've got a plastic pot regal here, this is very light and it's dry. It's dry to the touch in the uh, drainage holes at the bottom. And that is going to be good because that will enable the liquid to be taken up very, very quickly. So there we are, pelagoniums like to dry out between waterings. That's the, the secret of getting them growing well. Now this pot, you could argue, is just marginally too big for this pot really, but I'm going to be in control of what this takes up. Now this big regal here, I'm going to give this a high potash feed now because it's got really as big as I want it to get and I wanted to start developing bud. Uh, it's, I'm filming this on the 4th of May. I think at the coming weekend, it's six weeks to the show. 
and I want this to really start thinking about getting some bud. So I'm going to put a high potash feed in this in this saucer. Here's the high potash feed. So there are a couple of techniques that you can use. You can either use a small amount, put a small amount in, and see that drawn up by the plant, and keep going with small amounts until it sort of more or less stops taking up. That's quite a laborious method. I generally over water, and then after about 10 or 15 minutes, any remaining water that it hasn't taken up, I chuck out. You could argue that's a marginally wasteful way of doing it, but I put it on one of my borders. The water's not completely wasted. So in this case, I'm going to fill this saucer up, just overflowed there marginally, in my excitement of doing the video here. Well, now the thing to note is that you'll be surprised just how sort of quickly this water gets taken up the side of the pot here. And I would think in a relatively short time, that will, absorb, that will have absorbed right up to about halfway up the pot. And realistically, you don't want it to go much more than that. I've actually sort of cut the video a little bit through. This has been a good five minutes now, and it is slowing up. It took up very fast to start with. But certainly when we get to the 10 minute point, I will almost certainly take this out and chuck the rest of the uh, the water. I do not share water because as I've said in the past, we have got this minor problem with mealybug. Not that I don't think actually at the moment many plants are infected with it, uh, but it's, I, it's not a risk that you can take because you can easily get cross contamination if I say lifted this out and put another plant in this water. Uh, so I'm not going to do that. I will literally lift this plant out and uh, dispose of this water just on the garden. But we'll put this one down for now and I'll cut back in in about 10 minutes time and we'll see how it's getting on. Now another alternative, I'm going to bring another plant into this, another regal. I mean it's only coincidence that I have got some dry regals, that's all is to use the small saucer method. Now this is a plant, same thing, it's really dry at the drainage points coming out the bottom. Now what you can do with this is another technique where you use really a saucer that's sort of too small for the pot really, but this gives very good control if you don't want to do water wastage. Uh, because what I can do, this is really dry, and I can just fill that up, it fills up in a second, and you can see that disappear. That water's now nearly all gone. See how that's gone down? That absorbed up straight away. And I'm gonna put another one in. You can do this a couple of times. This one will absorb down just a bit slower, but it's still gone down really quickly. This is obviously really quite dry, but the plant is very robust. It's not come to any harm at all by being so dry. So I would say that using this technique, I've filled that up twice now, and I would say that that is already a third of the way up the bottom of the pot in terms of the compost absorbing the uh, liquid, but it really needed it. That was obviously really dry. I will put another one in just to see if it takes it all up. If it takes it all up, then it clearly sort of needs it. And that's about as far as it's gonna go. That's sort of settling now around the bottom. So it's still absorbing, but much slower. And that would be fine for me. Uh, but this technique, yeah, it's a little bit more laborious, but it's probably a bit more accurate. So that's fine, that, that's gone down. There's a little teeny bit in the bottom, but that one is now done. Right, so what we'll do now, we'll have a look at a dwarf. Let's move over to a zonal. Uh, this is a dwarf zonal. This is one of my Shrivenham stars. Technically, you see, this suggests that it's a source of a four and a half to six inch pots. Well, this is a four and a half inch pot. Right, okay, so let's uh, do this dwarf. Now, I still want some growth on this, so we're using a, a balanced feed for this one. Now, in the, in the winter, I would literally do something like that, and that's it. Just literally a dribble at the bottom, and that would be it, that would absorb that up, and it would be, that would all, that's all that I would do in the winter. Uh, but at this time of year, the plants are growing quite quickly, 
So I'm gonna give just a little bit more. I'm gonna fill this saucer about halfway up and leave it at that. What I generally always do, I will go round and fill all my saucers about a third to halfway up like this, particularly in a, a plant like this where the saucer is a, proportionally a little bit bigger than the, uh, the sort of pot size as such. Uh, and then I will go round afterwards after I've done all my watering, go back to the beginning because it takes about, you know, sort of a good 20 minutes really. If there are any sat in any liquid, that liquid will get sort of taken off. You really don't want your plants to be sat in water after much, after about 15 to 20 minutes at the absolute maximum. So that one sat there, we'll let that just ride. Got a regal here, which is exactly the same technique because it's in exactly the same size pot. So I'll fill that up by about half. Uh, and let that just absorb up as well. And we'll just let those absorb up their liquid. Push those out a moment. And we'll talk about clay pots. Now, clay pots are a completely different story. Why? Because clay pots are porous. Uh, all the liquid can escape out through the pores of the pot and drain if you're using a well-drained compost like i am here the plants will dry out much much quicker um, because the the poor the porosity of the pot is actually pulling the moisture out of the compost and so it's very very important that you keep an eye on these Be with a clay pot one of the problems is of course is that you put a crock in the bottom so you can't actually feel the compost so you have to get a gauge, an idea of how dry it is at the top. You can dig down a little bit if you wish. But I generally water mine when it gets really dry at the top, such as in this case. And for clay pots, of course, we are watering from the top. And that's the main difference between the two. So we'll water this. We'll wait for it to just begin to drain out the bottom. And then that'll be enough. Now in the winter, all I would do would be to dribble a little bit around the top and more or less leave it at that. I wouldn't wait for it to dribble out the bottom because that would be too much in the winter. But at this time of year, you want it to be dribbling out the bottom because, you know, they need to be taking up quite a bit of um, liquid uh, and you've got the porosity of the pot, which is, you know, you know when the plants are growing, that's going to... A, enable the root ball to dry out really quickly. Now, one of the problems that you can have, of course, in watering from the top, is that you can really muck up your uh, the tops of your compost. So I sometimes put a little bit of uh, clay pot just on top, which stops a big divot being able to uh, dug out of the compost, of the watering stream that I'm using. So, just giving this water through as I say this is more than I would give in the winter in the winter I would almost certainly stop there but I will keep going until I can see a little bit coming out the bottom because you know the temperatures are going up and there it is it's just coming out the bottom you should be able to see that yeah there it is it's all just coming out the bottom now so that's fine and there we are, that one's sort of done. And what you can do then, I mean, all that I would do in this case, I put my watering can down, is now just lift that out of there. You will get a little bit of water wastage in this case. I mean, my plant, my big potted plants on the floor obviously just get watered and I can forget about the water, you know, coming out the base. But in this case, with this smaller one that's going to end up going on a bench, I will just lift that off and put it on the floor for a little while just to drain off before I put it back on the bench. And that will just get put on the garden. A uh, little bit of feedy water. I'm sure some of the shrubs will uh, enjoy that. Right, okay. So I've come back now about 12, 15 minutes have passed. Um, you can see in this one, the, the, the water has gone down about halfway. 
And I have to say, in normal terms, I probably would have filled this up about halfway, and that would have just absorbed that. Because it's quite a big um, saucer, relatively big saucer to the size of the pot. And there's still quite a bit of sitting water there now after sort of 10 to 15 minutes. So I will now lift that out and just empty this into this saucer. And that's done. Um, you know, there we are. That's had about 15 minutes of sucking up everything. I filled that right up, if you remember, if that it slightly overflowed, of course. And that was fine. But under normal circumstances, I would probably have filled this up about halfway mainly because I'm used to the size of the saucer in relation to the pot. And this would normally be a sort of halfway fill saucer. The other two, we were a little bit more conservative with. We filled these up about halfway. And, um, you know, that the regal is taken up. Uh, that's taken all of that up. And that could just be put away. That's completely sort of empty. It's just a, a line of water around the base. Uh, but that's totally absorbed all of that. I filled that, if you remember, about halfway up. And it's taken it all up in about sort of 10 minutes. Um, so, you know, that's quite happy. And it's the same with this dwarf. This is it's got a little teeny bit left in the bottom. I would probably just leave that and that'll absorb the rest of that up. But I, as I say, I filled this up about just about a halfway point. Um, and that will be sort of a half to two thirds of the way up the pot that will have absorbed. Um, and that's fine. Uh, but the key thing, as I always say, is just wait for it to com virtually completely dry out before you water it again. OK, so there we are. They're the key points to take note of with regard to watering. Um, this little scented standard that I got here that I watered, that's just drained off on the floor. I'll put that back on the bench now. I'd be quite happy. So there we are. I've hoped that I've filled in some gaps for those that were requiring some information on watering. Uh, but the key thing is with these, with these saucers, it's all to do with how big the saucer is in relation to the pot. Uh, and watch what they absorb. If they haven't taken everything up within about 15 minutes, then get rid of any remaining because they do not want their root balls to be sat in water. Guaranteed killer, that is, so uh, be very careful. Put a few comments in the, uh, in the comments section there if you want to ask a question, but I'm hopeful that I've covered everything. Um, got plenty going on, of course, now. In early May, lots of plants really beginning to grow away. Uh, I'm hopefully going to film another video about my Regal hybrids this afternoon. So I'll see you again very, very soon. Bye-bye for now.